Hello, everybody. How are you, precious standards? Those of you that are standing for your marriages, it's Lakidra. I'm here to encourage you guys on today because you know many of you all need to be healed. You know, on yesterday we talked about how will you welcome, how will you be able to welcome your prodigal back? And that when he, when he or she comes back, how it is important that you be healed. And so before we get into that on today, I want to first thank all my new subscribers. Every one of you that have subscribed, I just want to thank you so much. And many of you that have liked and commented and shared the video. And I thank you even for the support and the ministry and the work of what God is doing in your life. May God bless you and bless you so richly. And bring restoration into that marriage. And we know that he is because he is so faithful. You know, that spouse that's coming back home, they are going to come back to a different person. Someone that they could least, they can't even, uh, you know, imagine you being. They cannot even expect you being. Because God, when he come in and do a thing in our life and in our heart, it truly be a miracle. And so what we go through, it really be for our own good. You you may say, well, I don't, I just don't like the process of that. I don't like the pain that that we suffer, you know, with this situation that has happened in our marriages and all the things that, you know, we've gone through and the heartbreak and the heartache, but I'm a witness. These things really be for our own good. And I want to get into, you know, this healing process with many of you because it is so important. It is so important for you to be healed before your prodigal come back or your spouse come back because they usually come back broken. Not all, but majority of them will. And you want to be ready. Even if they do come back whole and healed and God has been dealing with them behind the scene and as well and they come back, you still want to be ready. You want to be able to be in unity and harmony with them. You know, and they not see the same old habits or the same old character trait. You know, they were caused a burden to be upon them as well and that will make things a lot harder for the marriage to restore so you know it's good when we are ready as well and so you all know that I've been healed I can truly say that I am healed and I'm going to get into that today I want to show you guys how to receive your healing as well and what are, the, what are some of the things that I had to do in order to be healed? It is so important that you all take heed to what I'm going to get into today. You know, that separation, again, like I was saying, it is so powerful. Because remember, the Bible talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We talked about it as well on yesterday when I took you all into 1 Corinthians on yesterday talking about how when the spouse leave, or you know, the unbeliever leaves, those of you that are right now standing for your marriages and the separation or the divorce, whatever it may be, the Lord is showing us in his word how this thing is for your good. It is part of the process so that you may heal. And I know it's, it's difficult to see the breakup and the separation and, and the divorce. But remember, God never makes a mistake. I'm a living witness. That, that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me with my husband leaving. That way, I would have my own time alone with the Lord. You know, our time alone with God is the key to healing and restoration. You know, because it is vital that we come to this place of peace. Because you know, many of you might ask, yeah, Lakeidra, what is it? What is it that we do 
to be healed how how can i be healed and be ready for when my spouse and i join together or come together and reconcile well what you do is this turn it away from what hurts turn it away from what hurts us and on to what heals us and that is turning to the word of god turning to our lord jesus christ who is our healer you know in in first corinthians let me go ahead and jump into the word with you guys first corinthians chapter 7 i want to go back over this it says in verse 15 but if the husband or wife who isn't a believer insist on leaving let them go in such cases the christian husband or wife is no longer bound to the other for god has called you to live in peace see what paul is saying here this means you will no longer be in bondage when they leave the bondage of the pain, the bondage of the hurt, the bondage of the problem, the bondage of the difficulties, the bondage of all this confusion and this oppression that has you depressed, that has you, you so heavy laden and worn out and distressed. So Paul is saying the Lord is bringing relief to the believer, the Christian who is crying out for help. Let them go. Let them go. It is important is what Paul is saying here. But then he picks up and says this here. Don't you realize your husband might be saved because of you? And don't you husbands realize that your wives might be saved because of you? Meaning, don't you realize that this is what's going to bring salvation? When you are strong, when you are ready, that marriage can, can now be restored. You will now be a better person to that individual who is bound, who is an unbeliever. Now, this is what's important here. When you are in this place of peace and the Bible talks about letting them go. Look, it is so important that you actually do that. Meaning, yet yeah, you pray for them, but actually stay away from them as much as you can. Especially when you know they're hurting you. Because remember, it goes back to this. We turn away from what's hurting us if we want to be healed and turn to what heals us. And right now, if your spouse is belittling you, condemning you, blaming you, speaking out against you, threatening you, speaking harshly towards you. You know, all this emotional abuse, a mental abuse. You cannot heal up under that. If they are fanning in your face, yeah, I'm with the other woman, or I'm with the other man, and you're this, and you're that, and all these things. This is what's going to keep you hurt where you can't heal. And so the Lord, he is so merciful. He removed them. Now, when he removed them, let them go. When they text you, look, I remember back in my early part of my stance when I was just, you know, trying to really figure this thing out and how to handle this. I remember when my husband would send me texts and after I see that first line in that text, I would read it. And once I see where that thing was going, look, I wouldn't even continue reading it would be like I'm hearing but not hearing and delete it so I wouldn't go back to it because I noticed that I will pay a big price when I would turn my eyes upon these things instead of the Lord. You pay a big price. I would be so wounded and hurt and damaged would come and it would harm me instead of helping me. You see, I had to learn the hard way. And that was the greatest thing that I've learned when I used to delete those messages because what, what, hap what happened was I accidentally deleted one of them and deleted all, actually it was set up to where the whole strand of them was deleted. Accidentally, because I was only trying to delete one, but it was a whole strand of them, many, a many text messages. 
And I, I, I realized that was the Lord trying to help me. He was trying to help me. Because I discovered that once these things is out of sight, they are out of mind. And, and I, I stumbled across that. And I said, oh, Lord, thank you. You know, because you know, you, you know how we'll go back and look at those text messages or, you know, just to hear what, the, what was said. Or out of curiosity, we want to read and look. And I'm so glad that those messages was deleted out of sight. Why? Because God was trying to heal me. And I learned from that day on and forward. Don't look at these things. God means what he says. He says to keep our eyes upon him. Meditate on his word day and night. The Lord is our healer. Hearing his voice and not the voice of a stranger. Because I'm going to tell you something. I know you may think you're dealing with flesh and blood. Because you're talking with someone who's a human being. But it's a spirit that has taken them. Speaking through them. Because they have been con. They have been reconditioned. They have been reconditioned to the mind of the enemy who has come in deceiving. And so they are going to say what they're hearing, what they're thinking, and what they are seeing. That's what they're going to speak to you. That's going to be out against you because if it's coming from the enemy, it's going to be against you and not for you. The enemy is not for you. The enemy is to bring damage and harm and distress and pain and wear you out mentally where you can't even function and break you down so low where, where you are beyond recovery. And so when you are having this conversation, you're finding that when you finish the conversation, you are worse off than you was before. And so I will see, see, when I see that first line, after I would read that first line and I saw where that thing was going, I wouldn't even continue reading. Many of those text messages to this day, my husband don't even know. I don't even know what was said in them. Because once I got to that first line and I saw where this was going, I didn't even continue. Well, why? Because I was trying to guard my heart and keep the peace. And I was following the instructions of the Lord. When the Lord said, let them go, let them go. Don't even entertain what they're saying until they learn how to start speaking the right things to you and respecting you and honoring you and speaking love until there is peace. But until then, no, no, guard your heart. Turn away from what's hurting us. We must turn away from what's hurting us and on to what is healing us. What is going to love us. What is going to bring peace. What is going to bring joy. What is going to bring comfort. And that's Jesus, the word of God. So the Lord removes them. Now when he removes them, don't run behind it because I'm telling you, it's going to be like a thorn in your flesh. You won't see healing. And so it was that process that brought healing. It was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And so bef be before your spouse get into it, look, pull away. Don't even hear it. You might have to say, look, let's talk about this another time. I, I, I think we'll just talk about this another time. And back up. And I know out of curiosity, you know, we be wanting to hear and entertain and argue. But I'm going to tell you, it's like you're hurting yourself. The more you go after them to hear what they have to say, and you want to get in, the, in their face, you know, and go word for word with them. It's like you're bringing harm to your own self. You're damaging your own self. It's like you, you're coming against your own self. You're bringing this self-harm to you, which is not wise if you want to heal. And so, you know, the Bible tells us to, to let them go. 
That's what that's what the Lord is talking about. That is what the Lord is saying when he say, let, let them go. Let them go. Yes, that, 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 that is what the Lord God is, is, is meaning. When Paul says, let them go. He's not saying go run off and fall in the arms of someone else and lead them bound. No, remember there is a covenant now. Because Paul goes on and talk about, don't you wise realize that you will be the one that caused your spouse to get saved? And husbands, don't you realize that your wives will be saved through you? So Paul is not saying give up on them now. Otherwise, he would not have come back and stated that. Okay, so let's let's not take the scriptures out of context. Let's let's make sure we're hearing now because the enemy could trip us up if we don't understand what God is saying and we go and make problems even worse. Okay, so healing comes by hearing the word of God, turning unto the Lord. You know, the Bible tells us that even in Isaiah 61, I love it. In verse one, I'm going to read it from the, the King James Version. It says, the spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good news unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. See the good news brings healing. This anointing. This, this, this precious all. This precious all of the Holy Spirit. It anoints us. He anoints us. When we hear the word. And the anointment. This anointing. Or this ointment. I would say brings healing the word of God is like an ointment precious words it's like an ointment thinking upon what is good it's like a precious ointment it anoints us with all you know it anoints your head with all and your cup will run over and surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life the Bible tells us you know, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want for he maketh you lie down in green pastures. He restores your soul. He, re he leads you by the still waters. You know, all these things is what would bring healing and rest to your soul. He'll make you lie down in green pastures where you won't want for anything. When we hear his voice, you know, the spirit of the Lord comes to anoint us with all. As we hear the word of God, it will bring healing to your soul. and You'll be ready for when that spouse come back. It's when you hear the good news, the goodness of God brings healing. And so we got to turn away from bad things and negative words. Because in, instead of hearing what's good to us that brings healing, it'll work in reverse. There won't be no anointment, no, no anointing or the uh, ointment to bring healing to that wound in your soul and in your mind. If we're hearing things from the enemy, the enemy it's going to bring pain and sorrow. This is why people are so depressed and have low self-esteem because of what they have heard. Negative things. Words that are cutting. Words that cut so deep. Many haven't been able to heal from to this day. Because you have, you know, when we hear people belittle us or condemn us. You know, the Bible says there is no condemnation. There is now no condemnation to them who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Those that are in Christ Jesus, those that are hearing his voice, there is no condemnation. 
The Lord doesn't come and condemn. The Lord comes and save and heal and bring good news and bring good tidings unto the meek, those that are open to hear, those that are ready to come unto the Lord. So it's not looking to man. It's not looking to your spouse. They, they, they can't help you right now. They, they can't work with you right now. The enemy has come in. You have, to, you have to surround yourself with those that are for you and that are not against you. And it's not that we are seeing our, our spouses as the enemy. You don't want to see them as the enemy either. It's just that they are being used by that. It's just that they will be used. They are being used by them by the enemy and so you you have to stay away from who is being used by the enemy now this is why the lord says let them go these are unbelievers what does that mean to be an un unbeliever someone that's spiritually dead someone that satan has taken no it, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't mean that they just don't believe god no it's more to it than that don't you know they are spiritually dead when you have turned away from God, you are dead. When you are not with God, you are against God. Don't you know that the Bible says that all those that reject the Lord loves evil? I'm just telling you what the Bible teaches in John 3. The Lord says, all those that don't come to me are condemned already because they love to do evil. Anyone that is not coming to the Lord is filled with evil. And so you want to listen to that? To those that are in prison. You know, the Bible goes on and tells us that. The spirit of the Lord go the, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. You know, it's through the preaching that God binds up or heals the brokenhearted and proclaim and proclaim liberty to the captives, bringing uh, uh, bringing liberty to those that are bound. It's through the word of God. And it would open up the prisons to them that are bound. So anyone that is not hearing the word of God and is not believing the word is bound and in prison. They are being held in prison. So if your spouse is an unbeliever, they are being held in prison. They are in captivity. Well, by who? Satan. Satan, the God of this world who takes them, the Bible tells us. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 26, they are taken, they are taken captive, they are in a prison where they need to come to their senses now so they can escape from the devil's trap, the Bible tells us, you know, because he has held them to do whatever he wants. And so... The word of God, when man opens up their heart and begin to become a believer, it opens up the prison doors to those that are bound. And so when, when a person is bound and they are behind these prison doors, Satan causes them to do whatever he wants. And so when we are turning and running behind these people, whether it, it doesn't matter because it's your spouse, they're not going to have nothing good to say to you right now. If, if Satan is the one making them do what he wants, your job is to go and get yourself healed. Go and get yourself delivered. Go and get yourself free from this pain and turn to the Lord. Let him nurture you and get you strong in the Lord. And then you can bring them out. You can begin to pray and have faith in God because all that is going to bring faith as well. Not only will you be healed, but you will have faith. Faith comes also by hearing the word of God. And it brings healing because now that you are hearing the word, you can see now how God going to bring you out. 
it's going to give you hope now. It's going to give you a sense of peace now. You know, once you can get in the word and see how God is going to fix that marriage, bring out of that spouse that heart of, 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 of stubbornness and that heart of wickedness and, and how he's set them free. Now you're going to start having hope and faith and, you know, you're going to begin to be confident and you're going to begin to see that God has an answer. So now it's going to build your faith. It's going to bring courage. It's going to bring encouragement. It's going to bring, you know, just this heart of joy. Because now you are seeing, wow, my God can fix this. It's not over for me. Regardless if my husband had filed the, the, for divorce or my wife no longer wants me or whatever. Once God begins to show you his plan and you can see who he is, faith is going to come. Healing is going to come. You know, because you're hearing. How God is setting the captives free and how the day of vengeance of our God is near. Meaning God is going to take vengeance on the enemy that has taken your loved ones. How God's anger is going to come against that enemy. You know, because you are hearing all these wonderful things now, healing is going to take place. Strength and boldness. And now when your spouse do, you know, reach out to you and they may say things or whatever, whatever, you know, things that, that, that has come your way and you have no control over, you're going to be so strong by that time. And you're going to know how to handle that situation. And you won't even give it no mind, no, won't even pay it no mind because you have found out the truth. You see that it is not your spouse that is saying all these things. You found out that it is the wicked spirit. And now you go after that in your prayer closet beginning to bind up the wicked spirits and begin to say the Lord rebukes you. The Lord God's anger, the Lord's anger is against you. The Lord said that he's taking vengeance against you. You know, <clears throat> excuse me guys, and that's what you begin to say to that enemy with boldness, declaring liberty, declaring that your spouse is coming out. All this is going to bring strength, hope, and it's going to bring faith and courage. And then love and healing and forgiveness. All that's going to follow. You're going to begin to pray for your loved one. Pray for that spouse with compassion then. Standing in the gap. You know, going before God on their behalf. Intercede and saying, Lord, forgive them. Or Lord, help them. Or Lord, bring them out. You know, it's no longer this discord and division coming from your end now. It's more of a love and now you can welcome them. And so this message that I'm giving on today, it basically is going to tie into what we talked about on yesterday. But for many of you all that haven't heard that video, I would encourage you to do that. It's called, How Will You Welcome the prodigal back. How will you welcome your prodigal spouse back? You have to be healed. You have to be healed and make sure there is no, you know, grudge is still there so you won't be able to bring up what they did. You can now focus on helping them heal. You can now focus on, you know, them seeing this God that has changed your life. You want them to see what God has done in you. This will provoke them to want God. But when you are broken and they are not able to see the power of God in you and the strength in you and the love in you, they're going to say, what, what is this God? I don't even want this God. In fact, I don't know if I even want to be here. Because all I'm hearing is the same old thing. You know, it's, 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 it's the same old, old, same old, you know, the same old life that we started in. And so I don't know if this is going to work. And so they'll get discouraged themselves and give up. That's why Paul says, don't you wives or don't you husbands realize that your, your spouse will be saved through you? Once you are healed, once you have allowed God to work in your life, let them go. This is so that you can be made strong. Hallelujah. So the Lord knows the plans he has for you. He knows what he's doing. God is trying to help you guard your heart. He knows what is hurting you. So he's trying to remove the thorn. He's trying to remove the pain. He's trying to get you to know him now. And have this relationship with him. 
Come away from these wrong sources and these wrong relationships. These things that are not doing good for you. Bringing healing unto you. These things that, that is making you weary. And wearing you out. Breaking your spirit. Putting you in this prison and this bondage. The Lord said, no, I've called you to live in peace. Not to be bound by no one. No man, no thing, no enemy, nothing shall come in and separate us from the love of God. Whether it be persecution, whether it be despair, whether it be famine, whether it be death, whether it be an angel. You know, no angel, no death, no life, no nothing shall come in and separate us from the love of God. Whether it be whatever. The Lord God said, nothing shall separate us from his love. The Lord need us to be rooted and grounded in his love so that we could be strong. You know, that's how we survive, by hearing his love towards us. Hearing and seeing his kindness towards us. We, we can't be around all this, these things, this terrible thing that's coming up against us day and night. Who could survive like that? Who can live spiritually like that? These things drive people to even want to commit suicide. No way. No, because God said, I didn't make you all to, to be around this thing. I'm going to come in and give you all life. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to protect your heart and your mind from these things. I'm going to come in and send my word that's going to heal you. For the Bible tells us in Isaiah, you know, 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The Lord said, I want you healed. I've taken on this punishment. I've been chastised so that you can have peace. And, and with the whips that were placed upon my back, it was so that you can be healed mentally, spiritually, and physically. I don't want you bound. I don't want you broken. I have carried your sorrows. I have took on your infirmities. You know, the Bible tells us that in Psalms 107 verses 18 through 20, that when they cried to the Lord in their trouble, he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. And he rescued them from their grave. And then in Nahum chapter 1 verses 7, it says, The Lord is good. He's a stronghold in a day of distress. He cares for those who take refuge in him. And then the Bible says in Job chapter 3 verse 10, Let the weak say, I am strong. And also in, J in John, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. And then in Romans chapter 8 verse 11 it says the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. Hallelujah. And then it says in Psalms 103, chapter 1, verses 5, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And may I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. You see, the Lord is the God that heals. And then it says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, through verses 22, you all know I love these scriptures here, these verses. I have went over them with you all many of times. It says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life 
to those who find them and healing to their whole body. You see, the Lord said, just pay attention to me. Turn to me who is your healer and turn away from what is hurting you. Turn to me and turn away from what is bringing the hurt, what is bringing the pain. You're not obligated to hear these things. We don't have to take this from no one. It doesn't mean nothing because it's your spouse or your loved one. It doesn't matter who they are. If these things are hurting us, you can say, wait, wait. No, not today. I don't think so. I don't think that I'm going to hear this no longer. I don't think I'm going to allow people to break me down anymore. That's what you have to say, precious people of God. The Lord is nowhere commanding that any of us stand there and stand right there and allow people to just hurt us day after day. The Bible says he has called you to live in peace. Let them go. Let them go. Well, why? So that you can be healed. So that you can have peace and be prepared for when they come back. And when they come back, you'll be strong. You can be that true help me, wives. And to you husbands, you can be the strength. You can bring healing. You can begin to wash and nurture your wife as Christ loved the church. But you can't do it if the Lord is not filling you up in your mind. If his word is not in your heart, if you're lacking the word that brings healing and that anoints us with this ointment that brings healing to our pain. And, you know, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. The Lord say, ask me for whatever you will, and I'll give it to you. And I love the way Jesus puts it. Also, he tells us, he says, you know, ask, ask the Father for anything in my will. Ask him in my name, and I'll give it to you, because this is what brings glory to the Father. That's what he says. He said, ask, ask him for anything in my name. Ask the father for anything in my name and he'll give it to you. He's talking to his disciples. He's talking to you who he loves. The one who was bruised for your iniquities. The one who was chastised for your peace says this. And by his stripes, you were healed. The Lord is your love. He is your God. He is your strength. He is your joy. He is your peace. He is your rescuer. He is your deliverer and your healer. You know, we don't need people to come in and heal us. You don't need your spouse there to bring healing. No, you'll be healed before they even get there. You want to be healed before they even see you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is what it's about. And this is how I've healed. This is why I'm strong and I can come on here with joy, hallelujah, and laughter. And you know what? Faith is in my heart. And this is why I'm seeing things turn around in my life. This is why I'm seeing God answering prayers. This is why I'm starting to see things turn around and restoration is drawing near into my life. I'm seeing a change and a breakthrough in my husband's heart. I'm seeing a, a, a difference there that, that was impossible. I'm telling you, that was impossible. It was no way that my husband could come out what he was into. The demons, the devils, you know, they'll come in and, and take them. They'll come in and take them. I'm telling you, and the devil won't let them go except you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will set the captives free. He will put the sword in your mouth, which is the word of God, and cause you to speak and take your authority. He says, because I've given you power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. 
You'll take back what the devil has stolen. You'll save your whole house. When you are healed, when you are strong and strengthened and love is what will draw that loved one back. But if there is still brokenness and hurt and pain, you know, well, who can do it? No, you, you're going to heal first. You're going to heal first. Who can walk on a broke foot? Who can who can walk and, and fight and, and walk? In a battle when they're wounded, a wounded soldier is, is headed for defeat, will be defeated in, in war. A wounded soldier won't get far very long before they collapse and, and die. And so think about that. If that's what we are spiritually. The enemy won't, won't, won't be able to have a hard time at all coming against you. It'll be easy for him. It'll be easy for him. He won't have a hard time in this battle here if we're wounded. No, he, he'll win that one easily. Think about it. Wouldn't you win easily a battle against something or someone that is weak against you and you strong? That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Only the strong going to survive. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. It, it takes strength, precious people of God, when you're in a battle, in order to endure to the end. And in order to see restoration, it's going to take the strength and the healing. Hallelujah. And that's what, what brings restoration and recovery. And now I'm going to pray for many of you all today. That the Lord God will begin to do just that. But remember, what do you do? You turn away from what's hurting. And unto what's healing. Hallelujah. Because it is the word the Bible says that he sent forth to heal them. And deliver them out of all of their destruction. Turn to Jesus the healer. Who is the word of God. Who became flesh. You meditate and hear his word day and night. Don't be so quick to run to the phone. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You can't get healed that way. It's like you hear. But you don't. You don't want to hear when it's negative things. When you see that text message come up. I'm telling you, pay attention to where it's going. Where is it going to take you? Is it going to take you back in the pit? Or is it going to help you get to the palace? Because if it's going to take you to the pit, no, you stay away. You back up. You don't want to fall in these pitfalls. You back up. You brace yourself and stay away from these pitfalls. Watch them. Watch them. Keep your eyes open to what's going to put you in the pit. Stay away from it. I'm telling you, that's how you're going to heal quickly. Won't take long if you do it, if you practice what you're hearing. And so now I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for everyone, Lord God, that has heard on today. The meek hearts, those hearts, oh God, I pray that you heal them. Bind up those broken hearts. Bring liberty, Lord God, to the captives. Open up the prison doors unto them, Lord God that abound in the name of Jesus. Lord God, bring comfort to them, the ones that are mourning. In the name of Jesus, bring the ointment of your all, Lord God. Bring them, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Strength and grace and peace and mercy so they'll be ready for when that prodigal come home in the name of Jesus. Thank you that their prodigals are coming home. Thank you that they are being healed. Thank you for joy and liberty. Thank you for, sh for shelter and the refuge you're giving them. Thank you for saving them. We give you the praise for it now in Jesus' name. That when that spouse come home, oh God, he will see nothing but you. They will see nothing but you. These husbands who are standing for their wives won't, won't see nothing but you in them. They will see the love in their husbands, oh God. The love, the same love that you have for the church in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord God, for everyone that have joined, everyone that has been standing, trusting in you. May you give them, oh God, the desires of their heart. Answer, Lord God, every prayer. Hear every, Lord God, tear, every cry. Wipe the, their tears from their eyes, Father, through your word that they have heard on today. And Lord, we just give you the praise for it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we all say amen and amen and amen. God loves you, precious people of God. And remember, the Lord is for you. And I love you too. And I'm for you. And until next time. Bye-bye.